Well, if you keep an eye on the markets, you know that right now the only constant is the inconsistency. The Dow has been flirting with 8,000 more often than not these days, and it all begs the question, how do you make money in a down market? Well, this week's guest says he has some answers for you. He's the author of Do-It-Yourself Hedge Funds, Everything You Need to Know, Everything You Need to Make Millions Right Now. So I'd like to welcome Wayne Weddington. Uh, you were a senior portfolio manager at a hedge fund, correct? Yes, I was. All right, so and some 20 years of experience in the, in the industry. Yes, I'm aging myself, but <laughs> about 20 years. Well, let's start with a definition of a hedge fund, because people hear about hedge funds on TV, or they hear from friends, uh, people, other people talking about them, but there is this mystery that surrounds the hedge fund, and I think a lot of people just don't know exactly what they are. Okay. Um, well, first of all, the definition of hedge funds has changed a lot in the last 10 to 15 years. I mean, effectively, they're specialized mutual funds, that invest in generally a broader range of investment uh, investment securities. But I would say probably the thing that distinguishes them the most is that they're very active short sellers, they use leverage, they use a very wide range of securities, and um, I would say much more intensive use of market information to take advantage of market opportunities. Now, by and large, hedge funds have been known for years as mutual funds for the rich. Would, would that be, is that you know, fact or fiction there? Um, that is true, okay. um, because most hedge funds are not regulated. Um, generally, only those that have the resources to go into hedge funds, say $5 million or more, um, have been allowed to get past the velvet rope. And in fact, there are income requirements in many of the hedge funds, correct? There are, they're both- As well as net worth. Net worth, I, I believe that, um, and uh, I'm sure my lawyers will correct me if I'm wrong, but um, <laughs> generally a qualified purchaser has to have more than $5 million in net worth to invest mm -hmm. into a hedge fund, or two consecutive years of a million dollars of, uh, of income. All right, so let's talk about what uh, the average Joe can do, because these hedge funds are becoming more and more available to people, correct? Yes in in no. some ways, in some ways. Well, I would say that, um, Still, it is the case that hedge funds are, are still mostly unregulated, mm -hmm. and for the average person, they are mostly not available as investment. Uh, so they're vehicles. still a little out of reach. Definitely, and uh, you know, for most people and their uh, and their portfolios, I think that's the right decision. Nonetheless, um, there are many techniques that are used and employed by hedge funds that can now be employed. For the, the individual investor. Of the, of, the, of the individual investor, of course. All right, now in hedge fund, now a hedge fund is different than hedging, um, because we, if, were you to hedge, uh, you would be trying to minimize your risk, whereas in a hedge fund, you are typically taking larger risks. So how do you, how do you kind of explain that to the individual and the average investor yeah, to get them a, to? It's a very important point. Yeah. Um, the original hedge funds were intended to reduce uh, the risk of the market itself. And so uh, by the definition of hedging is to buy one group of securities to decrease the risk associated with another group of securities. And so that's how they started out way back in 1949. Um, starting in the 80s, uh, they began to be more directional um, and to include a far wider reach in terms of uh, what would be the target investment for a hedge fund. So it is true now, if you think of some of the uh, more fantastic performances as well as some of the fantastic failures, most of them are the result of not actually being fully hedged most of the time. All right, so let's start with some advice for people who are thinking about trying to take a, let's make up a word, a hedge fund-esque strategy to their own personal investments. So, um, what would be some successful hedge fund strategy advice that you could offer? Well, the first thing I, I, I do, uh, one of the things I, I do describe in the book is, as I said, there are two, I would say, distinguishing features of hedge funds. One is short selling, and the other is uh, using leverage. Now, short selling is important, not necessarily as a naked opportunity, but actually employing hedges in your own portfolio. Let me give you an example. Um, if within a sector you liked a particular stock, but you didn't want a uh, single exposure to that sector, you might short sell something against it. Mm -hmm. If you like Google, you might short Yahoo against it. And if you look at the spread between those two securities, those can generate a, a, a return that wouldn't equal exactly the same if you were just long Google, but it does also eliminate some of the risk of, um, of that sector. So 
I would think, especially in this market looking forward, and given the volatility that's in the market, you should always think of not only the opportunities, but how can I reduce my exposure to the risk that the opportunities I've identified may not perform for me. Is now a good time uh, for people to, to start experimenting a little bit with their investment strategy, or should they stick with what they know right now? Well, I think it's essential. I, I get a lot of uh, questions like, uh, should I sell out of this market? Should I liquidate my portfolios? I'm down 50, uh, 60 percent. And what I answer them is that, first of all, uh, it really is an opportunity. If you, the time to sell would have been six months ago. Sure. So if you have a portfolio and you're looking at, as I know many people are, looking at their 401ks and they say, this is way down, what do I do? Um, going forward, for example, we know it's going to be volatile. One way to benefit from that is selling volatility. Mm -hmm. You can sell call positions against, if you have a good portfolio of blue chip stocks, I mean, who would have thought GE is where it would be? Or JP Morgan. I can't think about it. So, <laughs> it's too upsetting. <laughs> So one way to take advantage, for example, um, of the current markets is actually to sell volatility against your existing positions. And what the book tries to do is to, is to encourage people to think of market opportunity thinking. So not just through the regular lens, mm -hmm. but also through um, more creative ways of looking at the market and taking advantage of it. Wayne Weddington, thank you so much. And uh, if you have any questions or comments about anything in today's interview, please send them to me. It's your money at news12.com. It's your money. Be right back right after this.